Hi, my name is Corey. I work at SoundSlice, and in this video, I'm going to show you how you or your students can practice choral music in SoundSlice. This is one of my favorite applications for SoundSlice because I think it really connects the dots between what choir rehearsal is like and then what it's like for the choir member to practice on their own at home. So I'm going to get right into it. Here's an example of a choral piece loaded up in SoundSlice. And by the way, I added this to my SoundSlice library by using our built-in Music XML uploader. If you have a Music XML file for a piece of music, you can upload that. If you don't, you can use our notation editor and work from scratch. I will just hit play with my spacebar so you can get a sense of it. Okay, so you can see we have a part with soprano, alto, tenor, bass, and a YouTube reference recording. And it's really nice to see these going side by side. If you are practicing by yourself, you can feel like you're in the choir and follow along with the music in a really useful way. So first things first, students practicing at home, they can very easily click and drag anywhere in the notation to create a loop. And then they can even slow down the recording speed. So I'll play with that right now. This is a really great way to practice. Let's imagine that you're a soprano and you aren't necessarily concerned with the other parts in the music as you're practicing at home. You can very easily hide them by simply clicking on one of the instrument names and going over to the instrument appearance menu in the settings box. You'll notice that as I clicked that, the instrument appearance kind of shakes to get your attention. Now, if you click solo on that soprano part, you'll notice that the rest of the music is going to be hidden and you'll see that over here in instrument appearance, those parts are now grayed out. So if I close settings and hit play again, you're gonna hear the same music that you did from YouTube, but you're only gonna see the part you want. And that's great. So one step further, if you would like to change the level of zoom in this part now, you can just click and drag this little dial and the zoom level box in settings. Now let's pretend that as you're practicing at home, you remember that your choir teacher told you, you need to think about the bass part and how it relates to your part. So you could go ahead, click on the instrument appearance option for soloing the bass. And now you have both the soprano and the bass together. So this is very useful. You can now just practice with only the things you wanna see. And maybe this part becomes a little bit distracting because you have two instances of the lyrics being side by side. Well, it's really easy to just turn off the lyrics on one of those parts or both of them. Let's pretend you just want to keep them on the soprano but hide them from the bass. And this really cleans up the way this looks and it's going to make it much less distracting for you to practice. Another option here is to show only the lyrics for the music. It's very possible that you have some choir members that aren't as familiar with standard notation, but still learn by rote very well. And in that case, you can encourage them to just turn off the standard notation, leave the lyrics on, and still have a really good experience practicing with just the lyrics and the recording. They can still click and drag to make loops just on the lyrics. <laughs> As a teacher setting up your choral slices in SoundSlice, we actually have created a shortcut to get to lyrics only mode very quickly. If you go to the editing view of your slice, click settings and advanced, and you'll see an option that says enable lyrics only shortcut. If you click that, you're gonna notice a little microphone icon pop up in the lower right of the control bar. Your students will now be able to toggle between standard notation and lyrics only just by clicking this newly accessible button in the lower right. So again, this will only show up if you enable that option in the advanced settings. Something else I'd like to show you is how choir members can use synthetic audio to practice with individual parts of the soprano, alto, tenor, or bass. So this recording that we have now is from YouTube and it's obviously not isolated in that way, but we do have an option in SoundSlice that's gonna let you get something close to that. By switching to synthetic audio, you're going to hear a MIDI version of every single track. And I'll play this right now just so you can get a sense for it. It's not the most beautiful thing in the world, but it's going to allow something pretty powerful. <laughs> So 
So you get the idea. If you go ahead and click on the volume button over here, you're gonna see a mixing panel. Let me just move my camera. You're gonna see a mixing panel for every single track in the music. Now I can solo and mute individual parts just like I could with the notation. Let's solo just the alto part and see what that sounds like. I can add in another part, say the bass. I can even change the levels on all of the tracks. So if I bring them back together, but I really want to focus on those inner voices, maybe I'll encourage the student to take the soprano and the bass just down in the mix. So this is really great for practicing those individual parts on your own. Just really, really powerful. And one last thing that I want to show you is a feature called the keyboard visualizer that we have built in. Now, if your student has access to a piano at home, they may want to be able to play out their own parts as they practice. And if they aren't as comfortable with standard notation, this is going to help them. When you open up the keyboard visualizer, it will automatically light up the notes along with the track that you have selected. So in this case, you can toggle between the soprano, alto, tenor, and bass just by tapping on the instrument name on the left-hand side. Now when you click play, you'll see the notes light up just along with the music. So again, this is just such a great way for choir members to practice on their own. I hope you've gotten some inspiration from this and that you're excited to bring in some SATB parts to work with your students or choir. I hope you're well. Have a good day.